sweet and marvelous the love of Jesus sweet and marvelous the love of Jesus sweet and marvelous oh oh wonderful love higher than the sky deeper than the ocean wider than the universe oh oh wonderful You guys were dancing and praising God. You guys did a great job. Right now, before we get into the Sunday class, we're going to get into the story. I want you guys to listen um, to the story about a little girl named Emily. Um, whatever Emily went through in the story is something familiar. And it's something that most of us have already gone through. So just pay attention listen and just when we come back we're going to be asking questions okay so i'll see you soon tabby this one's for you and what about me um what's the matter gumbo Freckles loves Tubby more than she loves me. She hates me. You didn't get a lollipop for Gumbo? Um, I got only two. I gave one to Tubby and kept one for myself. I see. Let me tell you the story of Emily. There lived a young girl called Carol. She was six years old and a very popular girl in school. She was friendly and sweet, and everyone wanted to be friends with her. One day, a new girl called Emily came into Carol's class. She was a quiet and shy little girl. She went and sat all by herself in the last row. Carol, who was sitting in the front row, turned back at Emily and smiled to make her feel comfortable. Emily smiled back at her, a little hesitant. The teacher entered the class and began teaching. Soon, the bell rang and it was lunch break. All the children got up and ran out into the garden to play, except Emily. Carol was about to leave the classroom and she looked back and saw Emily sitting all alone, looking out of the window. Carol went up to her and said, Hey, why don't you come and join us? It's fun during the breaks. We all play together. Come. Emily didn't know if she really wanted to go out and play with the others. She was feeling very shy in her new school. But Carol would not leave her alone. She pulled Emily by her hand and ran out of the classroom. She took her out into the garden and brought her to her other friends. Look, we have a new friend. Everyone, meet Emily. Emily, these are my friends. Emily smiled shyly. There was one boy in the group who did not smile back at Emily. He said, No, I'm not going to play with her. I am not playing if she's playing with us. Saying this, he stomped off. Emily started crying and she ran away from everyone. Carol was angry with Tim for his rude behavior. 
so she made a plan and discussed it with her other friends. Next day, after class, Carol went out to play with her friends. They took Emily with them too. But this time, they did not take Tim along with them. Tim sat all by himself and watched everyone playing together and having fun. He felt really bad. He thought to himself, That's okay. They'll want me to play with them tomorrow. The next day, the same thing happened. Emily, Carol, and all of their other friends were playing together, this time too without Tim. Tim was very angry with Carol for leaving him out. He walked up to all of them and said, How can you all start playing without me? Now, do you realize how Emily must have felt when you chose not to play with her? Tim realized his fault. He apologized to Emily and they all started playing together happily. So, it is never a good feeling if people don't choose you. We should always love everyone the same way. I am sorry, Gumbo. I didn't want to hurt you. You can take mine for now. And I promise to get you another one the next time. Take mine, Gumbo. We're really very sorry. Take both the lollipops. <laughs> that was a nice moral story, wasn't it? Hope you liked it. We'll be back soon. Bye-bye. Man, what a story. Can anybody tell me what was it that happened to Emily? Maybe you can write the comment on the on the bottom of the video. You can go ahead and uh and write your comment on there. And tell me if you know if you were listening to the story. Tell me if you know what happened to Emily, the little girl, in the story. I'll give you about maybe five seconds or ten seconds. Okay. So go ahead and write down whatever you think that happened to her. And then I have another question. I wanted to know if you guys know the name of the little boy that was in the story. Did anybody get that? Comment on there too. Okay, you're right. If you got this right, you said Tim, then it's correct. And then Emily, well, when she was new, right? She was new and, you know, Carol was the one that was that brought her to meet her friends, right? But Tim wasn't too happy in having Emily there with them. So he kind of made her feel a little bad, right? When he said, I'm not going to play with her. Wow, does that sound kind of familiar? Have you ever done that to somebody? Or has anybody done that to you? I remember when I was in school and I was little, there was some kids that were mean. And there was some, you know, that would say that to me. I'm not going to play with her. And um, oh my goodness, I know that feeling. That feels really, really bad. So if you never had that done to you, praise God. But if you have, you know what I'm talking about, right? So this could be even, in, it could be in school. It could be um, at your home. It could be anywhere else, even um, not just kids, but adults also. So sometimes people are mean. And sometimes there's sometimes where people are mean, but... They don't even realize that they are mean. They just, they're like that, okay? And they don't watch what they say. So words, not just actions or like the way you treat people, but the way you speak to somebody can also hurt somebody. So this story, uh, it turned out good at the end because the boy Tim realized that he felt pretty bad when 
they didn't want to play with him, right? So whatever he did to the little girl was done to him. So, you know, God tells us that however you want to be treated, that you should treat others the same way. So if you want to be treated nice and good, you know, and you want to feel good, then you need to treat those other people, your friends or somebody, uh, so, somebody else that you might not like. You need to treat them good. And sometimes it's a little hard, but it's not, it's not impossible. God can help you to do that because God treats us so good and he, you know, he blesses us and he helps us. And God says that whatever he gives to us, that we have to give to others, right? So what does he give you? What does he give you? Does he give you bad things or does he give you good things? So I know that you're going to say good things because God is a God of good things. He's a God of love because he is love. And this month is the month of uh, Valentine's Day, right? Well, the 14th is going to be Valentine's Day. But we, you know, we say, oh, yeah, you know, because we're supposed to have love. But we're supposed to have love not only on Valentine's Day, but we're supposed to have Valentine's. I mean, <laughs> sorry. We're supposed to have love every day because God didn't tell us just show love to others on Valentine's Day, right? He tells us to show love every day on all occasions, right? And everything that we do. So we need to show the love of God that's inside of us, inside of our hearts. We need to show that love to others. We need to show them that we love them. We need to show them that we care for them. We also need to show them that, you know, we have compassion for them, that, you know, we want to help them. So there's things that we can do to help others. You know, we can maybe if they need something, we can give that to them or you know, sometimes people don't have food, they don't have things that they need, and, you know, if we're able to give it to them, we can, right? And we don't need to be mean to people. We need to be nice people, like Christ is, because Jesus is nice, right? He's good, and he helps us. So the same things that God does for us, we need to do those those things for others. So maybe you've uh, you felt like somebody didn't want you, like they don't want to play with you or they don't want to, you know, be near you or they reject you. But God's always there for us and he's our God. He's God of love and, and he's there to help us through everything that we, that we feel. If you ever feel like that, just remember that God is with us. Like he's with you. He's, he, you know, he's your best friend. He's the one that's going to help you and he's not going to leave you. He's going to help you through everything that you need. So with that love that you have, because Christ gave you that love, just, you know, show people, okay? Show them that you love them and tell them about Jesus. Tell them that Jesus loves and tell them that Jesus is there for them and that he can help them also. And if somebody is mean, like, you know, Sometimes people are like that. They can change because God can help them change. You know, they might be mean, but if you pray for that person, God can change them. God can do something amazing and transform their life and help them to have that love, that compassion, that, you know, that caring uh, spirit in, you know, in them for others. And they will be, you know, that way. So this, I know that this usually when we celebrate Valentine's, uh, you usually like, let's say, make a heart and that heart, you give it to somebody that you love, right? That you like, that you love and you give, you want to give them that. But today we're going to do something different. Okay. You should have received one of those hearts and I'm going to show you. So give me a minute. You should have received one of these. Okay. And whatever type of heart 
you have to, to draw. What I want you to do is I want you to cut this heart out. Okay, if you can't do it on your own, tell your parent to help you. Cut it out. But we're not going to do what you think we're going to do. This time, I want to tell you to do something different. I want you to think about somebody that has hurt you. Somebody that has told you that they don't want you, that they don't want to play with you, that, you know, somebody that has been mean to you. And maybe it's somebody that right now you feel like you don't like them or you feel like you, hopefully you don't hate them because we're not supposed to hate anybody. But let's say you don't like them or you kind of don't want to be near them, okay? And this goes for everybody. I want you to make this hard for them. I want you to put on here their names, okay? And this could be for you if you want to, you know, if you don't want to share this with us, because we would really love to see what you do. So if you don't want to share that with us, it's okay. You can keep it, but for yourself, because God knows what's in your heart. So put down on here the name that it's for. That person, that person that has done something wrong to you. Um, or maybe even a person that you've done something wrong to. Okay? So it can go both ways. And just tell them that you forgive them. Or that, you know, you love them. Or just say something nice. Because when you do this, God will heal your heart. And God will bring a peace in your heart. Okay, and you will feel much better. So that's what I want you to do. And I want you to color it, do whatever you want with it. Okay, and just, you know, send us a picture. A picture, take a picture of it, send it us, to us. You can send it to one of the Sunday class teachers or post it, you know, to, uh, I'm sure you want to send it instead of posting it on there, but. Go ahead and send it to us, and then we want to see what, what you're doing. We want to see that you guys are participating. And I know that sometimes it's hard to do this, what I'm asking you, but I know that, you know, if you show love to others, regardless of what they do to you, because that's what God says to do. He says to love our enemies, to love those that hurt us and do bad things to us, okay? But God is greater and he is able to, you know, to heal everybody and to help everybody. Okay. And he's, he's able to bring a peace and unity between people that have, you know, been separated for whatever reason. I really hope that you enjoy this, uh, this class, this message that God has for everybody. Um, I want to tell you that Jesus loves you. And I just want to tell you that if you haven't received Christ in your heart, if you don't have Jesus in your heart, you know, and you want to have Jesus in your heart, please close your eyes and bow your heads and just repeat this small prayer with me. Okay, let's pray. Dear Jesus, I thank you for your word for Allowing me to hear your message right now. I come to you, my God, and I just pray that you will forgive me of all my sins. Forgive me of anything that I have done against you. And I pray that you will help me to forgive that person that has done wrong to me. That you will help that person to forgive me if I have done anything wrong to them. And I pray for a peace in my heart. Thank you in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. So I hope that you have done this prayer. And if you have, you know, you can let us know. God loves you and he's always there for us. Remember that he is love. 
God is always there and he's always giving us love. Okay, so I really hope that I see you guys next week. And be ready to, to just, you know, enjoy another class, okay? All right, God bless you.